What's up guys, Kyle here again and welcome back to another episode of Fact and Friday. Sorry I missed you guys last week. It was an extremely busy week getting ready for my band Bushido Code CD release show, which turned out to be absolutely incredible. We had a ton of people show up. Every single band killed it. So I'm really glad that we put the time and effort into that show that we did. And I'm super thankful for everybody who turned out and supported us for our CD release show. But with that being said, it kind of killed a lot of my time last week to get some content out for you guys. So I'm gonna try and make up for it by answering a couple more questions this week. So without further ado, let's get into it. First question comes from Gareth Smith. He asks, what's your take on the idea that certain players can make most amps sound the same simply by dialing them in to get the closest to the tone in their heads? I have two different brands of high gain amps and feel that I get them pretty close to each other since I'm always going for my sound. The feel is different, but the sound is roughly the same. I know Ola touched on this in the past, and my apologies if you already have two. Love the channel, keep it up. Thank you very much for your question, man. I appreciate it. And that is a good one. And that is already something that I have kind of encountered quite a bit with this channel. And I feel like if you know how to dial in an amp and you know the sound that you want from your equipment, this is gonna be true of pretty much anybody. Guys like Ola, guys like myself, where not that I'm grouping him in the same league or category as me, but he is kind of just a guy that goes for a single tone most of the time. He's not really a crazy multifaceted player. He's not like a session player where he's playing all sorts of different genres and everything. He's like me where he kind of sticks to his bread and butter, which for him is kind of the more modern metal stuff. For me is kind of the thrash and hardcore stuff. So we tend to generally go for the same tone on whatever amp that we dial in. So yeah, I've already been told a bunch that like I make every amp sound the same. And honestly, yeah, I do. Cause I know what I want to go for. I know what sound I'm looking for. And also you guys have to take into account that the, the speaker, the boost, the guitar, all that stuff is going to color your tone in a certain way. So if you're generally using a same or similar guitar, a same or similar boost, and a same or similar cab with similar speakers, even if you change the head up drastically, it's only gonna alter your tone a little bit because all those other things, I mean, your, your guitar tone is a sum of all parts. It's not just the amp head doing 90% of the work and everything else is just a little bit of flavor. No, like the cab is a huge part of it. The pickups in the guitar are also a large part of it and then even more so than those items the player the player how the player dials in the amp how the player plays i can hand my guitar over to derek in bushido code and he can play through my rig exactly how i have it set up and it will sound different. The way that he plays, his technique, everything sounds different from the way that I play. So therefore, even if I didn't aim for that same tone on every single amp, it's probably still gonna sound like me because I have a very specific way that I play. I have a goofy way that I hold my pick that everybody who watches my videos kind of makes fun of the way I hold my pick and how I have you know floppy fingers because I don't make a fist with my hand when I'm picking. Just something I've always done, never really, uh, thought anything about it until people started calling me out on it. But um, yeah, there's, there's so many parts that go into making a guitar tone. But when you keep a lot of those parts the same, namely the player and the player's ear and change out even some major components, the tone is generally still going to find its way to a similar sound because the person dialing it in knows what they want to hear and they're going to get it as close to that sound in their head as possible. So yeah, I do make every amp sound the same. And I think that every kind of experienced guitarist and person who knows how to dial in the tone that they're looking for is going to do the same thing as well. It's just kind of the nature of knowing the sound in your head and knowing, you know, roughly how to get there as well as you, the player, your technique, and generally using similar or the same pieces of gear with multiple amps. It's just bound to happen. So yeah, great question, man, and I appreciate you leaving that one. Mike Dervo says, man, I heard the Ronin record and it's freaking crushing from the riffs to the production. Thank you very much, dude. I was wondering what amp did you use on that album? All right, man, thank you for the question on that. I always love talking about the gear that we used on the album because I'm super psyched with how it turned out. I think that I have mentioned this before in another video, but it was way earlier in my channel. So the amps that I used, I am on the right side. If you listen to the record, that's where all my tones are. I'm on the, on the right side, right here, this side. But yeah, I used basically two amps that are not gonna surprise you guys at all if you've been following my channel for a while. My number one was my Splunk. Splon Pro Stock, my 2004 Splon Pro Stock with 6550 power tubes. That was the first amp that I used. And then the second amp that I used was just a EVH 5153 
50 watt 6L6 model, just the standard 50 watt model. The reason that I use those two amps is because those, not only are they two of my favorite tones, you guys know I love the 5150 stuff, you guys know I love the modded Marshall stuff. I feel like those were kind of at the time the pinnacle of each side of things for me personally. I felt that the 50 watt EVH 5150 6L6 sounded incredible. I was always super happy with it. And then same with the Splon. The Splon has always been the pinnacle of modded Marshall tones for my personal taste. They're super tight, they're super clear. The mids are still there. They're still angry as they should be in a Marshall type tone. So that amp has just always spoken to me in the same way. Now, the Splon is a little bit drier, whereas the EVH is very saturated, even on the blue channel with a boost out front. So I paired those two amps together. The EVH got recorded through the, the EVH got recorded through my Splon cab with the Vintage 30 speaker being mic'd with an SM57, and then my Splawn cab got recorded through a Friedman cab with a Vintage 30 and a Greenback being mic'd with an SM57. So that's it. I mean, I, I truly feel that the tones on the album are, are great. I'm super happy with how they came out. And literally all it took were SM57 microphones to capture it. So the engineer, Shane at Cerebral Audio, also, you know, he makes a big difference because he knows exactly what he's doing and he got it sitting just right in the mix and everything else. But yeah, those, those amps sound incredible. Over the weekend for the show, I actually used the Mezza Barba Trinity and the Splon Pro Stock for our live set. And I felt that those two paired incredibly. It's one of my favorite tones I've ever gotten, but I still will not hesitate if I'm feeling froggy to throw the EVH 5150 back into the mix with the Splon. The Splon will always be in the Bushido Code mix for me because Derek and I have both used them since the start of the band and that's kind of part of our sound in my opinion. But I have always liked to add another amp in just for a little bit more flavor to cover some of the stuff that I feel like maybe the Splon is missing a little bit just for my ear because I do tend to like modern high gain tones as well as the modern Marshall stuff. So why not combine them and get the best of both worlds? And it's worked pretty well so far, but yeah, thanks for the question, man. Marty Jackson asks, what do you think of the Fortin 33 pedal, especially for use in standard tuning? In short, it would be great if you make a video on the Fortin 33. All right, thanks for your question, Marty. I actually bought a Fortin 33 probably like six months ago, and I have not even plugged it in yet. I have heard them before. They're not really my thing. It's like take out all the lows and the low mids and spike the upper mids to the point where it just is, is insanely attacky and clanky. For me, being a guy who likes standard tuning, I do tune down for a lot of stuff, but generally I find myself in standard tuning. That pedal just takes out way too much low and low mids for me to find it effective, even on a fatter amp like a Mesa Boogie Rectifier or a Bogner Ubershaw or something like that. So I tend to not use it. Now, if I'm gonna tune down to say drop B or C sharp standard, I might consider messing with it, honestly. Um, I will do a video on it for sure because I kinda wanna compare it to the red channel on the Deadweld Duality DX because I feel like that does a similar thing but gives you more control over your EQ frequencies. And in my opinion, I just think it does a better job of allowing you to kind of fine tune the EQ frequencies while also being able to take out a lot of the bass and add a lot of mids if you want to, but it's not just one knob that's on a fixed you know, frequency sweep like the Fortin 33 is. So it gives you more options, but I'm gonna do a comparison video of those two and show you how I think that the Duality DX kind of serves that purpose better and gives you more for your money. I don't think that the Fortin 33 is a bad pedal by any means. I just think it's very particularly aimed at people who are tuning low, playing through fat amps, and really just trying to get that tight, clanky, percussive sound. It probably works great for that stuff. That's not really me. That's not really the type of player that I am, but I'm still going to mess with that pedal and see if I can find a use for it for myself, because it sounds like you're trying to use it in a similar situation than I am. So for a 5150, I can imagine it wouldn't work all that great. For a rectifier, I could definitely see it working better. For a JCM 800, I don't think it's gonna work at all because a JCM 800 is already light on the low end and already has a ton of upper mids in comparison with a lot of modern amps. So I think that that's just gonna be an extremely thin tone no matter how you shape it. So I can give it a try, but I don't think, I, I don't think that you would get anything useful out of it, especially if you're an E standard. So just my opinion. Thanks for your question. All right, 4142 Wilb asks, Hey Kyle, when you get a new or used tube amp head, do you automatically swap out the preamp tubes? I think it's new used, like new to you but used is what he's going for. 
Do you swap out the preamp tubes and readjust the bias on the power tubes or do you just run them as they came? Thanks for your question, man. And that is a great question. Uh, don't take what I'm saying as gospel because it's not. And realistically, if you have the opportunity to get a used amp and have it checked out by a tech as soon as you get it to make sure everything is working fine, I think that is the you know best way to do it. However, I get new gear in so often that as long as I plug it in and play it for 20 minutes to 30 minutes and everything sounds good, I'm not having any issues, the tubes aren't getting overly hot or getting red plated, you know, I, I visibly inspect the power tubes when I'm playing through the amp at higher volumes just to make sure that they're not red plating, which is where the tube, whole tube starts to glow like bright red. That means that, you know, you're, you're about to melt your stuff down. <laughs> then I just go with it, man. Uh, I just go with it and you know, I, I always check to make sure that the power tubes are the right kind because certain amps, like certain PVs, only take 6L6s. You can't swap over to EL34s and the EVHs are, are power tube specific. So as long as they have the right type of power tubes in it and I fire it up and play it for a while at a loud volume and everything's good to go, then I don't touch anything. As far as preamp tubes, if I get an amp and I plan on keeping it and I'm digging how it sounds, I will experiment with different preamp tubes and different slots, but it's definitely not a rule of thumb for me to get an amp and just change all the preamp tubes. In my opinion, preamp tubes are the thing that you should not change unless you're unhappy with your sound. I see a lot of people on like online forums or the Facebook groups buying amp heads and being like, all right, what preamp tube should I put in this thing? I'm gonna swap out everything, why? You know, you're just, you're just wasting your money, especially if you like how the amp sounds, don't fix what's not broken. I think we as guitar players have this kind of curse or disease or whatever you want to call it, just this mental mindset of, oh, I can always make my amp better. Oh, there's always something better out there. Oh, you know, I really like it, but I want to make it better. Well, what's better? What's missing? That's one thing you have to ask yourself. I always wanted to mod my 5150s when I had them in my younger years thinking, oh, a new transformer would sound so much better. But you know, that's not necessarily a given. Like you, you could put a Mercury Magnetis transformer in a 6505 or a 5150 and I'm not disputing that it's not a high quality piece of gear, but you may not like the change in tone that it gives you. You may not dig it. So if you're happy with your amp as is, don't touch anything. Just leave it as is and play it, man. I, I know us guitar players are always kind of, especially the tone chasers, are always trying to find out ways to make our amps better and tweak every little thing. But if you get an amp, it sounds great. It doesn't have any functional issues. I think the best thing to do is to just leave it be and play it because the more you mess with it and the more you mod it, you may not like the changes after you mod it and then it may be hard to go back. So preamp tubes, I, I suggest always having a couple extra on hand regardless, just in case one of them dies because you know newer preamp tubes, newer tubes in general are not as reliable as they used to be. So always good to carry an extra tube or two on you just in case for troubleshooting purposes if you have issues. But otherwise, if you're just into kind of tube rolling as they call it, where you kind of put different preamp tubes in different slots and see how it affects the tone, which it's usually pretty minimal. Some amps have a little bit more of an effect when you change the preamp tubes in certain slots, but overall, you're not gonna notice a huge difference. Then grab yourself just a few different uh, brands of preamp tubes and kind of experiment with them in different slots. Otherwise, if you like how it sounds and you don't feel like it's missing anything, don't touch the tubes. Don't touch them. Just leave them be and play it, man. That's, that's the best way to go. All right, Bruce Taylor asks, Hey Kyle, do you prefer 6L6 or EL34 amps, specifically in the EVH series? Thanks, love the vids, keep up the good work. Thanks, man, I appreciate it very much. Um, as far as power tubes, I really don't have a preference because I've said this a couple times on this channel, I don't think that they make as much of a difference as people tend to make out that they do. I don't think that sentence made any sense, but I think you get what I'm saying. I think the differences in power amp tubes are kind of overblown. Yes, going from 6L6 to EL34 will net you a difference in tone. It will get you a difference in feel, but they're gonna be slight differences. They're not gonna be massive. It's not gonna be night and day. And really, I truly have no preference because each amp is generally voiced to its power section or vice versa, the power amp section is voiced for the preamp section. So I love tons of 6L6 amps. I love tons of EL34 amps. And I don't think that one style of amp or one amp that's designed for EL34 is going to be inherently different than an amp that's designed for 6L6. I think it's all just in the ear of the person who designed the amp and what they had in mind 
for it. So with that being said, the EVH stuff, I, I really don't have a preference. I really don't. I think the EL3450 watt amp, I don't like it in stock form because the blue channel is kind of fat and dumpy. Um, a lot of people don't like it, a lot of people don't mind it, but generally I find more people dislike it in its stock form. So once you do the C137 mod, clip the resistor, it kind of brings it back to the same circuit, same voicing as the regular 6L650 watt amp. And honestly, between the two, I, I dig them both. I, it just depends on how I'm feeling that day on which one I might choose, honestly. There's no rule of thumb for me. There's not like, oh, if I'm doing this, I'm going for that one. No, man, they're, they're so similar. There's just slight, slight tweaks there or slight differences between the power section, which a lot of the time you're probably not even gonna notice if you're in a band setting and you're playing loud, like you're not, it's, it's, there's so much other stuff going on that the nuances of power tubes are probably gonna be lost on you. So I just say, go for what works for you, man. For me, it's whatever is in the amp at the time usually sounds great. There are very few amps that I have found massive differences by changing the power tubes. One that I have noticed is my Spawn Nitro. That had EL34Bs when I got it in. I changed those out to E34Ls, which are a tighter, more aggressive style of EL34 tube from JJ. That made a big difference. That tightened that amp up. That amp has obscene amounts of low end and it's a little scooped in the mids. It's kind of like a very modern style Mar Marshall type tone to the point where it almost really doesn't even sound like a modded Marshall. It's just, it's extremely modern. There's tons of gain. There's way too much low end. But swapping in those E34L power tubes actually helped tame and tighten that low end a lot more than I was expecting. So like I said, there are gonna be certain exceptions to the rule where power tubes might make a much bigger difference than you anticipate. But otherwise, in most amps, they, they don't make all that big of a difference in my experimentation because I have experimented with it a lot. So I just, whatever sounds good at the time, if, if there's 6L6s in the amp and it sounds great, I'm gonna leave them. If there's EL34s in the amp and it sounds great, I'm gonna leave them. Unless I really get into a mode where I wanna experiment with stuff, I don't particularly gravitate to either type of tube. It's just whatever works best for the amp that I'm playing at the moment. So I know that doesn't help at all and I apologize, but it's the truth. So thanks for your question, man. All right, guys, last question for the day. This is going to be a packed episode, and I'm already talking fast trying to get through this stuff and make sure I get to as many of your questions as possible. So last one comes from the Lazarus Concordance. They ask, any thoughts on the sound difference between tapping your signal post power amp via load box versus tapping just the preamp signal, say from the FX loop with power amp simulation like on the Two Notes Torpedo Wall of Sound plugin? Thanks for your question, man, and that's an interesting one. I have found that you can change the tone of an amp significantly by putting it through a different power section. If your amp has a preamp out, like the 5150 amps do, I believe, a lot of Mesa amps have a slave out, which is where you're sending the preamp out to go into another power amp so you can run your preamp into multiple power amps, stuff like that, or like you said, where you can send the effects send of an amp into the return of a power amp, or in this case, into a two notes captor, into your interface, and then use a power amp simulation, you're going to be able to change the overall tone of the amp pretty significantly by putting it through different power sections. So I have never really done that where I would take the effects send of an amp and put it into my preamp just to test the power or the preamp section with different power amp simulations or anything like that. I have done it in real life with sending, with the effects send or the uh, preamp out of different amps into different power amps and it makes a massive difference. Um, most amps, I don't think a lot of people put enough stock in how much flavor the power amp makes in the overall tone of a tube amp, but it makes a huge difference. Perfect example of this is I did a preamp pedal shootout not that long ago. I put it through the power amp of the Rev. It truthfully, it made everything sound kind of like the Rev sounded because uh, the Rev has a very specifically colored power amp that works very well with the Rev preamp. Well, it was also coloring the preamp pedals that I was putting through it, and I could hear the generator tone and the feel of that power amp all day. It was kind of crazy. Like, I, I never really mess with preamp pedals, and I haven't done the power amp slaving or anything like that in a long time, so I just kind of forgot how much difference a different power amp can make. So I'm actually gonna make a dedicated video where I take like the Soldano SLO, and I slave it out to a rectifier power amp just to show you how much difference that would make and then into a Marshall style power amp and you can see how much difference each 
power section on different amps are going to make because they're designed according to their preamp and how they want those things to work synergistically. So when you start sending the preamp of the SLO out to different power amps, you're, you're gonna get a pretty drastically different tone. So I'm gonna make a dedicated video on that. As far as messing around with power amp sections, as far as simulations before IRs, I haven't done that and honestly, it's not really something that I thought of until you said it, but I have so many amps and so many different choices to choose from that I doubt that I would really probably spend a whole lot of time like messing with those little nuances. But for somebody who say has one or two amps and has a two notes captor and really wants to adjust the flavors of their amps, maybe wants to do multi-tracks and, and wants to do one with the stock amp and wants to do one with a different power section, but the same preamp in order to kind of flavor the tone a little bit differently. I think that's a great idea. And truthfully, I do want to mess with it a little bit just to see how much of a difference it would make. I, I think that's a really smart thing to do, especially if you're trying to make the most out of a little gear, which is what most people are trying to do. Options like that are absolutely incredible for shaping your tone even further the way you want it or adding different color to multi-track stuff. So, great question. But anyways, yeah, this is going to be a long episode. That's going to do it for me this week. I appreciate you guys as always. I'm happy to be doing these episodes again. I've already missed two weeks in the last month and a half and I'm not even working anymore. I've just been so busy with stuff that I've been working on. It's an exciting time for me, guys. I'm super happy to be here. I'm happy that you guys are checking my band out. I'm happy to have all the new subscribers on the channel. I'm just, I'm having a great time with life right now. So appreciate you guys being here as always. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please consider hitting the like button, subscribing on your way out so you don't miss any more stuff. If I did not answer your question or if you have a question for me for next week's episode, put it down in the comments, please, in the comments. I've had people messaging me directly with FAQ questions and that's cool, but at the same time, I reference the previous week's video in order for the questions that I'm gonna answer on the show. So if you're messaging me questions, I'm not gonna get to them. Just put them down below in the comments. That way they're all centralized and I can choose which ones to answer from. But yeah, thanks again. Hope you guys have an excellent weekend. Kyle here, we'll see you guys next time.